I think it's time we started our new class project. So back in the garage after a long stint away from YouTube. Now the reason being is because I kind of got really bored after the Model A that I had just with all the bodges as you'll probably see if you've watched any of the previous videos. Got so far then decided to sell it. Then for a split second I was building a truck which none of those videos have ever hit YouTube. Um, but I got so far through that and again then got distracted by something I've always wanted. Now this is what I've always wanted. A 1932 coupe or Model A, Model B, I don't know what they call them, I think Juice Coupe or something, I don't know. But frame and paperwork came up with a load of other stuff which is kind of in the shed. Um, and I've just wanted one forever. It's kind of why I got the Model A because the Model 32 is like the most iconic shaped kind of hot rod there is. Um, and yeah, they just look cool. So I went with the Model A because I couldn't get a 32. And um, obviously that was bodge and uh, yeah, here we, here we are basically. So the plan is to do a YouTube series on this build. Now I've got some of the stuff from my previous Model A, which is the Type 9 rear axle. We've got the real big wide deep dish wheels, which look cool. Got a slightly better offset front wheels. And um, I sold the ones that were on my Model A and we've got some different ones now. So they will fit nicely. What we have got also for the Model A is a M57 engine. Now, I've had that engine for a while because it came out on my personal car. It's a really good engine. They get great power. Miles per gallon's decent on them. Um, I do know it should be a V8, blah, de, blah, de, blah, on one of these type builds. However, I want to use this as a daily driver. So I need something that's going to return good miles per gallon. And I can use it as a daily beater to hoon up to the shops or go London for the day or whatever I need to do. I just want to be able to get in it, drive, not worry about fuel consumption or it not starting or messing around with the carburetor. So it makes more sense for me personally to have a trusty old BMW diesel, turbo diesel in it. Um, and I think it's probably running at over 200 horsepower, which isn't to be sniffed at because the, the torque with the diesel is there and obviously it's a straight six. So um, it will go well. Um, so obviously there's a lot of work needed on the rails. Um, the shell is, now this is where it's going to divide people. So it's does a true 32 coupe um, because I am running a, well, I've got to pick it up tomorrow, a pro laminate, which is out of the rod line mould um, fiberglass body. Now it's got a roof chop in it. Um, it's obviously a two two door, uh, three window coupe. Good look, sweet. I'm not having the fenders, I'm gonna run fenderless. Um, but I do kind of need to run the front bonnet sides if I can do, or make some bonnet sides to hide this engine, because obviously it's an ugly looking engine. Um, and it's not gonna fit the look of the vehicle. So that's kind of something I've got to do at the end of the, kind of a bit further on now the reason i've gone with fiberglass is two reasons one you can't really get a steel shell Um, still kind of 32 is in bad condition of going for like 50 grand upwards i don't have 50 grand this is probably going to have me about 22 25 grand in once it's done to my spec but it's kind of it is what it is the second reason is the problem i've got with terms of i want to run it as a daily car now it's going to make a lot more sense to run a fiberglass shell because once it's watertight that shell is never going to rust the, the frame's not really going to rust with it being how thick it is and um, the problem i probably will have is i've got a load of front end stuff that's chrome work now that will deteriorate after time but again it's not going to kind of get me off the road so Fiberglass for me personally is the, the better way of doing it. And additionally, I'm running a BMW lump, so it's not going to be kind of original spec anyway. So I don't care. I'm I'm doing I'm just doing me. It is what it is. I'm just building what I want. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a pretty cool build. I'm not sure whether I'm going to be caging it out or not at this stage. But yeah, kind of this is where it is. I need to quickly tidy this garage, which I won't record. And then you may jump in the van with me tomorrow on the way down south to pick up my... Body. One minute, 37 seconds later. So I'm in the van on the A14, stuck in traffic at the minute. Um, absolutely awful morning. But I'm on the way to go see Pro, uh, Market Pro Laminates. So rather than you watch me drive all the way down um, to that, I'm going to click my fingers and like magic, I should be there. Very good, very nice. Very good, very nice. I did. They could walk around in a minute, but yeah, another two and a half hours drive back. Great. Let's have a quick look at it while it's in here.
After unloading and getting the van back, I decided just to sack it off for the weekend. So it is a Monday morning and I'm going to give you a bit more of a guided talk around this. Now, I'm going to show you the positives and obviously there's a few negatives to show you with this um, fiberglass body itself. Now, it is a pro laminates body um, and the moulds are the rod line moulds, um, which are pretty much well known, I believe. Um, and they're supposed to be a really good, light, sweet mould. There's a few issues with the mould itself, which obviously transfers to all of the kind of the things that come out of it. So we'll show you that it's basically some kind of cracking, um, like spidering in the fiberglass gel coat. Now that's obviously on the mould. It's not on the body until the body comes out and then obviously it kind of replicates what it's stuck to. Um, and obviously there's some kind of layer differences in height. So there's a massive kind of, I don't know, probably about a two or three mil kind of line on top of this. It's potentially going to need sanding back. Um, and obviously that's gel coats, that's a pain in the backside. And there's a few bits that have been sanded back that have got small holes in that are going to need repairing. So obviously don't think that like some things that come out of kind of a mould are ready just to have the polish, the gel coat polished and you can use them. Like the, I believe the Automat cars um, are like that. Literally, it's just a case of they've got so much gel coat on them, you can just polish them and use them um, or, or obviously paint them if that's what you're doing. However, this is going to need a lot of work to get it even remotely ready for primer. So I'm going to show you that. But the, the positives, um, really good quality in terms of um, they put kind of the matting in. On these quarters and obviously on the roof so i've had a mini uh well, i had two mini sprints which are fiberglass from uh abs motorsport and are absolute trash and the reason being is that on those you could literally just push in the uh the roof panel whereas on this let me uh let me brace the car a bit isn't it it's vibrating because it's uh oh we need to go that way it's dangling on the uh frame rails but that's pretty solid for a five glass roof so happy with that um obviously the rear quarters are the same so you won't have horrible rain noise and stuff with it now obviously the bulkhead isn't done but i do believe i'm probably going to be cutting this out and putting a steel one in um and then obviously you're going to have to work out everywhere else but i'm going to spin the camera around i'm going to show you the bad bits up close because obviously from this kind of view you can't see it. There are a few thin bits, which if you see anything, um, let me flip it around again. Sorry if you're going a bit seasick with this camera. If you see kind of like uh, this area here where there's white, um, this here where there's white, and kind of these lines there, that's where the light is shining through the gel coat, uh, sorry, through the fiberglass. Um, so it's obviously where the gel coat's been kind of rubbed away. Now that's okay in places. However, there's a bit in this kind of corner that I'm gonna to have to patch up because the gel coat has been sanded off, but it needs sanding loads more further. And I think it's going to end up going through. So I don't think there's enough um, fiberglass in this corner. So it's something I've got to address um, along with quite a lot of the other stuff. So we'll show you, we'll spin the camera around. I'll show you the bad bits because I want to show you good with bad. Um, if you're asking me whether I'd buy another one, bearing in mind that it was over three grand, um, I probably would. So don't take negatives as like, oh, I'm poking or trying to throw shakes. I'm not, I'm just kind of giving you a, a fair representation of what kind of work is required on my build and obviously with your own if you're going to go down this route um, because it's not as simple as a fiberglass one's going to be a lot less work than metal in some ways the metal will be easier however try to get a metal 32 body for reasonable products you're not you're not going to so obviously this is the way i'm going with it um, and obviously it's going to be a lot more longer lasting once all that effort and time has been put into it um, than a steel one would be anyway. So flip the camera around. I'm going to show you kind of the bad bits. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there.
basically different heights in obviously gel coat quite in quite a lot of areas which is going to need addressing and then when you sand those down because obviously you can see it has been sanded down in places um, by pro laminates you potentially got kind of air pockets and pinholes that are going to need filling so basically it's going to be a lot of sanding and filling which on a normal car would be okay but anything fiberglass as soon as you get to those fiberglass strands you're proper itchy and it's just it's just a horrible experience so really not looking forward to that um i'm definitely not looking forward to these rear quarters because this section is quite a lot higher the front section uh here it's quite a lot higher than this one so it's i don't know whether it's going to need building up or it's going to need sanding back that's kind of a decision i've got to make at a later date um and then the only other thing to address which looks really bad in the videos and it's, to be fair it looks really bad in real life isn't an issue with the gel coat um it's an issue with the kind of fiberglass plug or mold whatever you want to call it um and it's these spider bits here so you've got them here You've got them all across the roof and there's a couple of over here that have got on now. I was warned about this um, by Market Pro Lawrence before or in the shell. Um, but basically there's an issue with the the rod line kind of mould and it transfers obviously to all the cars. Now it does make me think, could they not just kind of fill and sand the mould? Um, if you obviously can repair a mould, would it not be better? So then obviously no one has to kind of all... It's like several people, if they do one job of repairing the mould, it means 10 cars that come out of that don't need the rest of the work doing. Um, so it's kind of, it's a shame they don't do that. But I mean, it's something that I've got to address now. It's kind of, it feels like I can fit my fingernail into it. So it feels more like a, a filling job rather than a sanding job. But he said that basically I can sand these out. Um, I'm not sure how, how that's going to be. I'm going to try his advice, obviously, first. He's the expert, so he knows. Uh, but yeah, basically, that is kind of how it is. The other issue is a couple of things don't fit. Um, again, he's obviously trimmed the doors to the maximum so I could trim off the door gaps. That's perfectly fine. But I bought a window recess for front. Um, and that doesn't fit at all like it's a bit longer um, it will only fit if it's kind of sat right on the front which would mean you'd need a windscreen it was like bulletproof thickness uh, but obviously it's only a flat piece of fiberglass so i can chop that down and, and kind of cut it where it needs to go so again that's not really a big deal at all so um it's fiberglass isn't it it's, it's realistically you've got to be realistic about stuff this was kind of copied off of a body at some point so it's obviously going to be maybe slightly bigger in places, slightly smaller in places, depending on how that mould was made. So it is what it is. I'm not disappointed. I'm happy with it. Um, the bodies, if you obviously you want to get one, I would go for Pro Laminates because they're a lot better than... Um, there was another 32 kind of company I looked at and they were trash. So prepare. You've got to do some work, obviously. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. But at the minute, sat on the frame. We're going to bob this rear off because I was going to put an original tank on the back. Um, I can get one of those, about 300 quid. But I've decided they just look rubbish. Like, after seeing a few rotted ones, um, with all kind of, like, the lights in the rear panel rather than kind of on the frame, the, the, the standard frame looks trash. So I'm going to bob the rear of it. I'm going to sit the front down and um, see where that is. And then I'm going to box it. So the first couple of videos are probably going to be me doing some kind of boxing um, onto the original frame, cleaning that out. But hopefully you're with me for the, uh, the rest of the videos. If there's any questions about this car or anything in general, just drop them below. Any comments, maybe how I should attack the fiberglass. If there's any people watching this that got more experience with fiberglass than me, please kind of just drop some advice of kind of what to do, other than kind of scrap it. Um, it's not at the scrappable stage yet, so I haven't done anything with it. Um, but yeah, if you can just drop some comments below um, and probably help me out a little bit. Maybe paint ideas as well, because I'm not sure whether to patine paint this. Or I was debating metal flaking quite a lot of it and doing a two-tone paint job. Um, so it's either going really shiny, a fake patina with a clear coat on, or a fake patina without a rusty paint. And I'm not overly sure what to do at the minute. So, yeah, pop a like, subscribe, comment if you can do. Um, share the video if you don't mind. Um, as much as it sounds a bit beggy, it kind of is. Because um, I do a lot of these videos for like 20, 30 views. And it, get, it kind of gets depressing sometimes. So hopefully see you in the next video. If I'm just bored to death with begging. And uh, yeah, peace out.